Three weeks ago, we installed the Furion Chill Cube to be the primary AC for our C-Class RV. Now we had our eye on this for a while because it has crazy specs claiming to be up to 50% more efficient than a standard AC and one of the quietest ACs on the market. So today we are gonna put it to the test against two other ACs to see is it really all that great or is it just a lot of marketing hype? So we're gonna take a look at three different units today. We're gonna to call it a budget unit, a modern unit, and then potentially the future unit that would be the Furion Chill Cube. And we're gonna compare some noise specs as well as do some efficiency testing to see does the Chill Cube actually come on top or is your money better spent in one of these other areas? Two of these ACs are gonna be on identical travel trailer units. These are both rental units at Leo's campground in Key West. So the first AC we have today, it is up on top of this travel trailer right here. It is gonna be a GE unit. It is a 13.5 thousand BTU unit. So this is the underside of the unit. This is a ducted AC and this is a 27 foot travel trailer. These came new with these GE units, but this is a good AC to use as a benchmark to see what comes on kind of a budget level RV that you get from the factory. But the best price that I could find was actually from United RV. So you can buy the rooftop unit for this for $650, the distribution panel for 200, and then the thermostat for 100 for a total of $950. So this is gonna be the budget setup. This is what you can get for under $1,000. Now we're on to the second AC here. So this unit also came with one of those GE 13.5 units and it actually went bad in like under a year. We didn't want to replace it with the same thing. So I looked across the market and saw what was the best thing that I could get at the time. And from what I saw, this was the best. Specifically, what's supposed to make this one different is that it really markets as very quiet, a lot more quiet than RV ACs that you're used to. This is a Rec Pro AC. It's made by Houghton. You can buy it directly from Rec Pro or you can get it on Amazon. But regardless, the cheapest price that I saw for this was $1,309. And so for that, you get the distribution panel, the actual AC that comes on top, and this one, interestingly, just has a remote with it. It's not hardwired into the thermostat on the wall, so this is your way to control it. And the third AC on our list that we're gonna be looking at today is the one that I've been mentioning, the one on our rooftop that we installed, the Furion Chill Cube. So I won't go into detail about what makes this so revolutionary, but this is an 18,000 BTU unit. And what makes it different than a lot of traditional RV ACs is that it has a variable speed compressor. With a normal AC that we've been used to in the past, it kicks on full blast and then it turns off and then it kicks back on full blast and it turns off. And it kind of does that balancing act to try to find a temperature that you set it to. With this unit, it slowly ramps up the power as you need it overall resulting in a lot quieter, a lot more efficient unit, or so they claim. We've had this for three weeks now and we've actually been really happy with it. There have been a few things that are a little bit questionable that we had to figure out, but we wanted to run some tests in order to get some numbers and have a very clear answer at the end of if this is worth your money. We picked up this unit from United RV Parts for a total of $1,190, and that is a base price of $1,000 for the unit itself, and then $190 for the distribution panel underneath. This one actually also comes with a remote to control it, so there's nothing to hardwire, and it also makes it a very seamless installation process. We did actually make a video on the installation of this, so if you're interested in that, make sure you check that out. So the three main tests that I wanna to do today are intended to be an accurate representation of what it's like to live with one of these ACs. So these companies all put out their own numbers and do like lab factory testing. But those numbers don't really mean anything if they don't make a difference in your day-to-day -day experience. So the three tests that we're gonna do are one, the startup power draw on these three units. Number two, how much noise they make when they're running inside of your RV. And then number three, how efficient are they at cooling down the space that you live in? So I set off one by one going into each of these units with these three different ACs to get the answers that I was looking for. So the first test that I wanna do is the startup power draw of all of these units. The reason why this test is important is that RV ACs are notorious for a huge power surge spike right in the beginning when they're turning off. And since I mentioned typically how they operate is turn on full blast, turn off full blast, and then go back and forth. Every time it turns back on again, it's gonna have this same amp surge going into it. 
There are some solutions out there like easy starts that you can install into AC units, but that is an aftermarket thing and we wanna be looking at just stock units today. In our RV specifically, we used to have to turn off our fridge or turn off a microwave, whatever we wanna do in order to have two appliances running at one time. But with the surge of our AC, it oftentimes pushed us over the limit. And it wasn't always super expected because it didn't surge the exact same amount every time. So sometimes we thought we'd be good, but we still tripped the breaker and shut everything off in our RV. So not very ideal. I first started by going in both of the trailers, looking at the two legacy AC units, and to do that, I used a power watchdog, which I was able to plug in the camper to this power watchdog and then connect to my phone so that I could see a real time output of how much power these ACs were consuming. I tried to turn off all other devices to get as minimal load on the RV as possible and just look at the AC consumption. So starting off with the GE unit, when this was starting up, it took almost three minutes for the compressor to kick on, but when it did, it had a surge of 16.4 amps. And then in the Rec Pro unit, this one also similarly took almost three minutes to kick on. And when this one turned on, it surged 25.5 amps. Reminder that most trailers and smaller RVs run on a 30 amp system. If you're running any other appliances in your RV, you're gonna be fairly likely that you're gonna go over that 30 amp barrier and possibly trip your breaker. So in comparison to those other units, now I'm gonna test the Chill Cube and see what it draws on startup. So I have the Power Watchdog app, and let's see what it draws when I turn it on. Okay, so really from that, you can see there was no spike at all with the Chill Cube. It basically has a built-in easy start, so it's not gonna put a lot of stress on any of your electrical equipment or anything like that. It just slowly ramped up one, two, three, four amps, topped out at about seven amps. But the point being is that when you start it up, there is no initial surge. So since we've been running this AC, we have had no issues with running an air fryer, having the fridge on, heating up water in an electric kettle, using the microwave. I don't think we've tried all of those things at one time, but point being is we have not had to turn anything off in order to run the AC. Okay, now that we've got this thing running, let's take a look at the sound level that these things produce. When we installed this AC, we were super excited. Like initially we were like, man, this is so much quieter than what we're used to. But I don't know how that actually stacks up with the other units that we test. So I'm gonna use my phone as a decibel reader and get a volume test for all of these units. In order to keep some standards, we are testing only these units while they are ducted. So we're not opening the direct dump and then we're gonna get a reading of what it is on the low setting and then what it is on the high setting. So starting off with the GE unit, when going into that one and checking the noise level, I put my phone about two feet away from the actual direct dump of the AC, even though that was closed just to get a consistent reading. So on the low setting of this AC, it read 58 decibels. And on the high setting, when we turn that on, it read 61 decibels. Similarly, we did this with the Rec Pro AC, holding it about two feet away in the very same position. On the low setting of the Rec Pro, it was 53 decibels. And on the high setting, it was 57 decibels. So that is much, much quieter than the original unit. And we were super happy when we installed that, that it was the quietest thing we had experienced to that point. But let's see how it compares to the Chill Cube. Okay, so I've got my handy dandy decibel reader ready. Let's see what this thing comes out at. Turning on a low setting. Okay, I think the highest that I saw was 47 decibels. Let's try on the high setting. All right, well, that made me feel pretty good by testing that. I'm surprised that the numbers are that much in favor of the Chill Cube. I did hold them away at the same distance. It was about five decibel less on both settings. So 46 to 47 decibel on the low setting, and then it got up to 53, 54 on the high setting. We normally run it on the auto mode, so the fan will turn up and down throughout the day. You don't really notice it that much when the fan's on low, and you, you definitely start to hear it when it's on high. 
it's probably going to be significantly quieter if you're in like a big fifth wheel and your ceilings are 12 feet high and you get that distance between you but that's what you got for our scenario here okay and last i really wanted to do an efficiency test between these three units but i ran some numbers and it just wasn't a fair comparison because those two other units are in 27 foot trailer it doesn't seem to be insulated very well and it had a really hard time cooling but basically what i'm doing for this test is i reset the power meter on the power watchdog and did a test for a full 48 hours to see what did our ac consume in that time so i am in key west florida and over the course of this testing period the temperatures throughout the day and night were between 78 to 83 degrees so not that much variance but 80 to 85 percent humidity from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m., we set it to 70 degrees because we like it a little bit cooler at night. And then at 8 a.m. until 8 p.m., it was set to 72 degrees. So basically what we were asking of this unit was to cool it by eight degrees to 11 degrees over a 48 hour period without touching any other settings on the AC. And I was pretty shocked by these results. After setting up this test, setting a timer on my phone and then resetting the power meter on the power watchdog we went through our normal daily life so some of our biggest power draw items in that time were going to be our fridge which draws an average of about 300 watts when the compressor on it is on our converter which is just a device that keeps our battery topped off running starlink 16 hours a day we turn it off for nights because we don't need to use it to work on heating up some water in the morning with an electric kettle to make coffees we usually cook for about 30 minutes with our air fryer and that draws anywhere from 14 to 1600 watts using the microwave occasionally not for long periods but to heat up some of our items as well as charging our laptops and phones both overnight so two full rounds of that and then having the tv on for maybe an hour and a half each day so just as a reminder, in addition to all those items, we were also running the AC the entire time. And at the end of the 48 hours, here were our results. So after completing this test, our total power consumption for this time period was 27.2 kilowatt hours. So on a per day basis, that breaks down to 13.6 kilowatt hours. But after subtracting all of those other appliances that I mentioned, estimating how many minutes we use it in a day and what those power draws are eight kilowatt hours of that was used by these other devices so when you subtract those numbers and just isolate the ac to get the actual real world power consumption we estimate that our ac used 5.6 kilowatt hours per day in this test so if you want to average it out per hour it drew an average of 233 watts now that was insane because our old AC drew anywhere from probably 1500 to 1800 watts and it would kick on and off maybe 50% of the time. So I don't want to boil it down to a number or a percentage because I'm not making any claims here, but I think you can kind of see based on that drastic difference, just how efficient this Furion Chill Cube is. In fact, this new AC is so efficient that I actually think our fridge has taken over as the lead for our most power hungry appliance. And that is living in Key West, Florida when we're running the AC all the time. So I was so, so happy with these results. And I will continue to do more testing on this as we drive north into different climates and other temperature conditions. But so far, I am extremely impressed with the efficiency. So a couple other things that I wanted to mention about this Chill Cube before closing out are some of the additional features that it has. The first thing that we have been using a lot is that it has a dedicated dry mode. This isn't a completely unique feature to this AC. We have seen them in some others out there, but this has just been really helpful in our use case in Key West. So the normal cool mode setting on this AC can draw anywhere from about 100 watts to about 1500 from what we've seen. It typically stays between three to 800 though. But when you turn it onto the dry mode, it doesn't ramp up and down anymore. It just has a consistent dehumidifying setting that runs at about 650 watts from our testing. And this has been a really efficient and consistent way to make it super comfortable inside our RV while we're living and working in it. The next feature is actually gonna be on the remote is there is a button for a follow me setting. By default, the thermostat exists in the AC unit, so the temperature that it's reading, it's getting from the roof, and sometimes that can be flawed. So there is a button on here to turn the remote into a thermostat, and then the AC will turn up and down based on the temperature of this remote. 
The next feature that we have not used yet, but I think is super cool for off-grid use cases and boondocking is a gear mode on it. So there is a button on the remote and on the AC themselves. And what this gear button is gonna do is when you push it, it's gonna cycle between 75% and 50% of the full capacity that it can power. So let's say if the AC is performing at 100%, it's gonna draw 1600 watts. You can set it to a 50% gear mode to ensure that it's never gonna pull more than 800 watts. And the last feature that I wanna mention is not even really a feature yet because it doesn't, it hasn't come out yet, is when we were installing this, we noticed that there was an extra plug and that plug is dedicated for a heat strip. There are a few different ACs on the market that I've seen that have heat strips built in, which means that it can create heat as well as cool. This one doesn't have it by default yet, but supposedly that is coming in the near future and they've already future proofed it. They already have a cable inside for it. So I can't wait for that to come out. Now, before closing out here, I do wanna share one kind of issue that we've had with the AC. So I would say in a general sense, the thermostat hasn't been super consistent. So it took us a few days to play around with it. At first we were using the follow me mode on the remote and then we were turning it on the AC itself. But there is a weird issue where the remote and the AC don't always sync up with each other. So it's hard to verify what setting you're on. If you're looking at the remote, it might say something different than the AC, but one thing that we saw online that was super cool that we are trying out at the moment is this smart thermostat for it. So we might feature this in a future video. We are still testing this out. That basically turns the Furion Chill Cube into a Wi-Fi connected device, which is really nice because we like to be able to control things from a distance. Or if I'm just laying in bed and I'm too lazy to get up, I could just grab my phone and change the temperature from there. Overall, I have been so, so extremely impressed with this unit. Now it does have some minor flaws, like I mentioned with the thermostat, but we are totally able to accept that for all the other pros that come with this AC. Now there is one other unit that I've seen out there at the moment at recording this video. It is called the Turbro. It is the only other AC I've seen that has a variable speed compressor. That one though, I've seen listed at $600 more than this one costs and it's only 13.5 BTU. But overall, glad that I could share my experience with you guys because I would totally two thumbs up recommend this AC. And if you wanna pick up one for yourself, I'll put a link in the description to the place where we bought this AC from United RV Parts. And I'll also include a QR code to take you directly there. It is not only the best price that I could find for the combination of the AC and the distribution panel itself, but I've also been super happy with their customer service. I've called them up on the phone to troubleshoot some issues that we were having with this. Overall, would highly, highly recommend United RV. Well, that is gonna do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We will keep testing this thing out as we are getting ready to hit the road here and head north. If you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up and feel free to leave a comment down below if there's anything you're interested in that we can help answer. As we are an open book and we're just really looking to help you guys. Thanks for watching.